Hello, I'm MBX Toycat, and welcome back to episode 309 of my Minecraft Xbox Update Adventures Let's Play. This is the Let's Play where we're playing through the various updates that have come out for Minecraft on the console, building stuff, killing stuff, and of course, destroying stuff, like the classic example of the desert vine, which I'm getting rid of bit by bit, slowly by slowly, and in fact, that's going to be a key part of today's video after I get rid of these zombies, I guess, because obviously one of the downsides of having such a giant village population is uh, I believe zombies spawn proportionally to the village, which means that when you have this, you get a lot of zombies. And that means we're going to go through here, we're going to kill them all, get some free XP, I guess, uh, to recharge my stuff. And, uh, I don't know, it's just kind of satisfying to destroy a large group of zombies. And then we're going to go to sleep and we're going to do the thing I'm doing today. So yeah, like I said, uh, the, the desert, uh, which might used to, well, it's not even a desert, honestly. Let's, let's be clear on the terminology of what we're destroying here. The desert destruction is one of my favorite things I've done, but it's not really a desert I'm destroying. And you might hear that and say, well, Toy Cat, if it's made of sand and then it's got sandstone underneath it, well, it's clearly a desert. But like I have to explain every time I come here, basically it's not a real desert. It spawned as a desert back in title update 5, but what used to happen is biomes used to move around underneath the game. So where, whereas this used to be a desert, I think it might be a plains now, it might be extreme hill. It's hard to be certain because there's no grass here. Although actually, wait, Okay, you know what, this is something I only just realized. I know this is silly though. <laughs> also look, even more zombies. Uh, it's kind of silly though, I've only just realized I can do this. But let's check which biome it is now with the color of the grass. It doesn't give you like a perfect um, explanation of it. I again, I, I, I just came up with it right now on the spot. But that, that way we can know like, oh yeah, well, is it this or is it that? Let's be certain. So let's just remove this big patch of grass. Okay, I've got a super shovel, it seems. <laughs> and let's just place uh, this gun over there. And hopefully by the end of today, we'll get a good feel for what biome it probably is. Because I think it's a forest, if I'm being totally honest with you. Um, like, that seems like the most likely option. Because I've never seen any mob spawn there. Although that would probably not necessarily be a forest. I don't know. I, we'll, we'll have to see exactly what it is. But there's never anything going on that indicates one biome or the other, uh, but this looks a little bit like a plains or a forest, so we'll just kind of get a feel for it again, like I said, and we'll see how that happens. So yeah, with that said, uh, let's get straight into actually, oh, let's eat some of those pork chops that we just put away. Let's get straight into the desert destruction, shall we? So, uh, yeah, this is the Let's Play where I play Minecraft and then I talk about what's been going on, what I've been thinking about, and, of course, sometimes even Minecraft itself. It's really crazy. Um, but, yeah, today I wanted to actually explain the project because this is this desert just gets more and more insane looking. Like, from here, you can see it's just like an endless sea of torches, and this is because the fastest way to remove uh, sand, at least uh, for most practical people, is to use torches like this, right? You place torch after torch after torch after torch. It's actually really satisfying, and because I need sand quite badly right now. It's actually, uh, you know, it's, it's a really useful little thing to do because by using no tools whatsoever, all I need to use is like one stick and one quarter of a coal. I guess one quarter of a stick and one quarter of a coal, and then I can make all of this happen. And if I really need to and I've run out of torches, then I can always go back and like get rid of some of the ones I've done earlier. Cause like, <laughs> this must be like 10,000 torches now or something. Like there is a absurd number going on here. But yeah, this, this is the best way to do it for most people. But because I went to the end city recently and I found a shovel in there with efficiency five, let me show you something amazing about efficiency five you might not have known. So instant breaking is a thing that everyone knows about in the never. You can break never act so insanely fast, right? That's just well-known fact. But it also works here in the overworld if you have efficiency, it has to be five, I'm pretty sure, and sand and dirt. So um, it could even be better if you have a haste, but we don't right now, which means that if you wanted to get rid of this giant patch over here, let's say, or Actually, I think this patch over here is a better example because it goes like into the mountain. Then what we have to just do is like spam it like this and just like that, it's gonna all disappear as fast as we can. So sand does have one downside of doing it this way, which is that it falls and you can't break the blocks while they're falling. So you kind of end up stuck if you're not careful of what you're doing. But what you can do is you can destroy a lot of sand very, very quickly. And given this has unbreaking, we can do this all day or probably not all day because you, you can see like the bar going down as we do this fast enough, which is <laughs> a little bit concerning even for a tool with 6,000 uses. But still, it's, it's just one of these things where I, I figure it'd be fun to do this, and since it's fun, we're gonna do it. So while we do that today, again, we're gonna be mostly destroying sand. Uh, my target is to like get this to there done, so there's like, a, again, I want the, the ocean to be left, but everything around it to be kind of safe. But everything, everything in between, I'm just gonna destroy my shovel because it's fun, and apparently I can get the shovel a lot if I reset my end. So yeah, we got we got like the best shovel in the game. It even has fortune on it, so <laughs> if we break like, uh, I'm not even sure what fortune would affect. Like, if I break dead bushes, maybe I'll get sticks more likely. There's some tiny things, you know, it's it's gonna be affecting and it's gonna be just great and just wonderful. So uh, yeah, while I do love this destruction, I do want to actually uh, talk about what has been going on since the last episode. Cause uh, I, I feel like, okay, you know, this is the most boring thing again. Like, I feel like when your life is on track, it's really actually quite boring. I mean, maybe, maybe that's just like my definition of on track and not being good enough. Maybe you should have some excitement in your life or you're having a bad life. So maybe this is like Toy Cat's big 
crisis, just too much lame stuff going on. But no, I'm gonna, uh, it's because uh, I'm trying to like, what I like to do is I like to do everything to excess or to, you know, ready up for excess. So, uh, for instance, uh, like when it comes to eating, I love crazy good, like I'll, I'll eat like, you know, a 4,000 calorie pizza if I have to, or like off pizza, but then I'll just, you know, not eat for the day before. Oh. Okay, so the good news is, is that this is right here, but we have to like replace the edge of this water somehow or it's gonna start flowing. So we'll, we'll work on that as we come to it. I guess now it's just created a new edge. Okay, we, we, we can't go too close to the water. But yeah, like I said, um, I like to do everything to excess, or I like to do it to the minimum. So I've been like recovering my body off the last time I just ate nothing but pizza or whatever, like just eating like healthy stuff. And there's something almost a little bit depressing about like, you know, healthy food, cause it's just like, oh yeah, so we put some vegetables with the tiniest amount of pasta that you can probably still think is pasta, or like, you know, this or that. Um, oh, I mentioned Calanoni uh, on, on the uh, live stream replacement, didn't I? Oh, pro tip, if you don't, if you only watch Let's Plays, cause there's a tiny uh, minority from the channel, cause I, I really I really love uh, the, the people who watch the Let's Plays. I feel like you're like the, the best little audience of the channel because you're, you know, you're, you're here to hear so you can't talk about stuff. It's not like, you know, I'm going to be angry if you haven't said six facts about Minecraft the next 20 seconds till I can't. It's just like, oh yeah, we're, we're here because, you know, whatever's going on in your life is cool. And I always, I, I always like that. I think it's it's something that's hard to admit, but I think most YouTubers have this where like, they almost need their life to seem interesting. And a part of me, uh, you know, as YouTube's gone on, kind of likes that a lot. I, I love it when people are like, oh yeah, that's that's kind of cool to look at. It makes me like feel good about myself, but it's a weird emotion to feel and to want, but I guess it's something uh, that you realize is in yourself the whole time. But yeah, as you, already we've got a full inventory of sand, so we have to go back and uh, fill it. And you can just kind of see the destruction, the craziness we can get done in such a short period of time. And I think for hills, this is just the way to go. It's, it's not, you know, a particularly efficient way because we have to do this every now and then, but it is a fun way to go and everybody loves fun, right? So let's just put the sand in there. I know there's a zombie about to attack me, so I'll just try and finish this before he gets it. <laughs> okay, I did it and uh, we're gonna go back. And I'm gonna mention that, yeah, my life's been like in a preparation phase. I think it's good to live uh, every life to polar extremes because if your life is just like solidly okay. In fact, I think I think this is how like, uh, you know, crazy, uh, you, you gotta imagine there are some people who like you think should be like really happy, but they're not because they're just trying too hard all the time. But if you go from like, you know, peak to, I guess peak to valley to peak to valley, that's how like most people experience the world. And that's like where the most fun is. Like when things are working the best or the worst, that's when the most interesting stuff happens. So there you go, live an interesting life, not a good or a bad life, because bad life's not fun and good lives are kind of bad in a way. And inter interesting is the only thing that really matters in a way. Did you hear that? That was like a, it sounded like something breaking, but my shovel wouldn't have broken. Maybe I'm going crazy. Anyway, so <laughs> I, I went over this a few times before like, oh yeah, so, do you know you're crazy or is everyone just humoring you? But no, I, I don't think that's actually the case. Although I think after like some of the erratic, like, like, oh, I'm going to talk about this than that probably leads people to believe that like, oh yes, yeah, so, so I can't, you know, it's not normal to jump around the, all the place that much. And I guess my response to that would be, I guess it's probably not. Well, I guess I'll go to some asylum somewhere. I, you know, honestly, the, the fact that we use asylum likes to describe places where people who are insane go, it's always been a bit scary to me. I, I read, I read a book on, um, on asylums once, it was like, I think it was like female uh, things and like, you know, how like it's, they're kind of just places we put people to get rid of them for a bit. And that's always been scary to me. Like, you know, it's good as, as someone who is not in any place where they just get rid of you because you're being annoying. Uh, it's kind of good, you know, like, I, I I guess it's good that we got rid of them. But, you know, it's, it's the idea of, like, you couldn't accidentally be sent there if, like, someone has a misunderstanding. It's terrifying that, like, it's so hard to get out of one of these places. And again, it's, it's one of those, like, you have to balance things versus other things. But it's still absolutely terrifying to me that like, oh yeah, what, you, you know, like I said, uh, so like, I think it seems scary to think like, what if you're insane and no one knows, but what if the opposite happens? What if everyone thinks you're insane and you're definitely not and you just can't like describe it to people? Anyway, that's that's like one of those tiny fears about life that you can think about and you can go with. But yeah, that's what I've been doing my life. Uh, recovery, would recommend recovering if you do bad things. I think this is why people drink smoothies, honestly. They're like, well, I, I, I did all these bad things yesterday, but it's fine because here's some crushed up fruit. At least that's that's my understanding of the situation. Uh, but yeah, so um, as well as just um, something, 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 revitalize it. You know, I like revitalizing a lot more than recharging. Um, I have been, uh, like, for the most part, just like, I, I guess, again, 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 ready for, like, uh, 10 days of, like, not being able to record videos. It's a, it's scary for me. Like, I, I, a part of me, like, is so, like, always on, like, making videos. It's, I don't know how I'm going to, like, turn off that part of my brain for, like, a week or so. But in case you're curious, I've been preparing videos for the time I've been gone. It's been taking me like weeks now, uh, but it should be covered. Don't worry about the video thing. Just there it is on my end. So as well as just uh, doing lots of revitalization, oh, I, I like that word too much now. Um, what I've also been doing a lot this week is, um, I guess I just thinking about small things. 
because I had some spare time in between like watching the Game of Thrones episodes and this and that. Which, by the way, Game of Thrones is back. Let me mention that. I love. I I hate getting into TV shows because like it's like a big time commitment and you have like a problem keeping it up. But like Game of Thrones is the one where like it's this rare treat, and when you get it, it's like yeah, this is this is dessert level TV. Like you you gotta save it. It's like a uh, if you ever eat ice cream, use like a tiny spoon because if you don't use a tiny spoon, then you get less mouthfuls, and you want to enjoy that like. Again, like, you can't eat too many spoons of a dessert without, I don't know, not being good. Uh, so you just have, like, these little tiny spoons, and then you enjoy it for, like, double as long. Pro tips of Toy Cat. But I think that also applies to, um, I think it should apply, at least, um, to what you do for, so let's destroy all this too. Um, I, I think that's how you should apply it with, like, certain TV shows, or, like, if you really like the Toy Cat Let's Play episode, let's say, and you're like, well, I mean, there's only one of these a week, then, I don't know, maybe you could watch, like, half at a time or so. I, I don't think that's actually a good idea, but I think, like, trying to make sure you watch it in the best circumstances is something that's, like, it's, it's actually something I tried to do with, like, a lot of uh, good TV shows. And with Game of Thrones, it's like, yeah, you gotta, it's gotta be perfect. This is, like, oh, we're filled up again. This is pretty nuts, actually. Can we fly right over there? I guess we almost can. Um, but yeah, it's, it's, it's one of these uh, things where you gotta like really value it and that's how some of stuff's been. But yeah, uh, so as well as um, just that, I, I've been thinking a lot between doing stuff like that and one of the things uh, that I guess I was thinking about is the, the idea of fiction as a concept, right? Which I know is confusing, but like I was watching Game of Thrones and um, it made me remember like something I heard like a while ago, like maybe like two months ago, where someone said like they don't watch or read any fiction because there's so much like non-fiction stuff out there that's interesting. Like, why would you ever watch Game of Thrones? Uh, you know, this is a bad example because Game of Thrones is so good. But it, why would you ever watch? Um, I'm gonna make up a TV show now. Uh, like True Blood, I think that is a show that exists. Um, why would you ever watch that when there's shows? I hope that's not like a non-fiction one. When you could like read about Henry the Eighth and his wife. So, oh, I didn't get rid of the sand. Okay, that's the one. One of the two things I went there to do. I half failed. And that's not good. But like, um, you know, like, you, his, we, like, when we the end, ape did his wife, so that was pretty brutal stuff. And like, why do you need it when we got, you know, why do you need to learn about this fantasy uh, crown situation when we got a real one? And there's all this sort of stuff where you think about it and it's like, yeah, I, I, I guess so. But then you realize, that, but th then you become to realize like, but the only benefit of that is like, you get to know more stuff. So instead of like being somewhat ignorant, I guess you could say, you'll know everything about history all the time, which is useful, like it actually helps you with the present. Because whereas stories are just designed to like, teach lessons and make you feel good or feel bad or feel, you know, whatever you want to feel. History, generally you leave it and you're just like, oh yeah, well now I know that like, if you make your armies hate you, or like if you pour tea into a harbor, then that's how you get independent. You know, whatever whatever part of history you're trying to like, you know, gain from, uh, that's like kind of a thing. Whereas if you look at, um, whereas if you're trying to look at fiction and gain stuff, you usually don't gain any, real lessons you're just getting like oh yeah that felt good but then you so, so I had this like big revelation of like maybe I should do that I should only watch documentaries and stuff but then you realize that fiction is actually almost always built on something that's real like with very few exceptions like I guess yeah Harry Potter like yeah I mean there isn't magic in the real world so that probably is all made up or you look at like uh, so it was you know sometimes fiction goes really out of its way but even then there's like core human concepts of like the relationships are real relationships that can happen to people or like uh, man this the animation is really weird to pick this up and then you realize that in a way uh, like not all, all fiction stuff all pretend stories in case you're curious what that word means uh, all of it kind of is just like a retelling of something that was factual at one point but in a way that's like easier for a human to digest. They're more interesting and more captivating. And when you think of it like that, like why would you ever waste your time on the non-captivating stuff? And I, I was really told that and then I realized, wait, wait a minute, there's a reason both exist. There isn't just an answer. Sometimes both things are good. Cause I, 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 I like this in particular, like if you have so much, you know, like I, I feel like there's always a correct decision to make. Some things you come down to like, oh yeah, they're both equally as good. But like you have a limited amount of time, you have a limited amount of money, a limited amount of, you know, things like, Resources are finite. This is a well-known thing. Uh, so like deciding what you should spend them on is something I'm always like, you know, you, you gotta be cautious off. But like, what if, what if there's a lot of things like this where it's just like, oh yeah, well, it's just all down to preference. And if everything is like that, then should you even start to care? Maybe that's like a, a mind-blowing decision. But for me, I was just like, well, that's something I realized and I figured I would share it all with you. Another thing I was uh, kind of realizing is, um, Basically the idea of like, uh, I, so when, right now I'm 22. If you don't know, I turned 22 in July, 
Woo, happy birthday. If you haven't wished me a happy birthday yet, do it, do it, do it right now. Just like out loud in the comments, however you want to get your message to me. But no, <laughs> um, yeah, I, I, I turned 22 very, very recently. Maybe this is the best way to do it actually, just to like power through. Yeah, that, we'll, we'll power through one row and then we'll power through back and we'll just see how fast that does it. Because if we destroy downwards, then it avoids the kind of gravity issues maybe. Um, but yeah, so um, I turned 22. And one thing I feel about like me being 22 is like lots of stories that used to feel really recently has suddenly gone like way into the past. Like me being 12 years old and like, uh, you know, I, I, so uh, th th there's the exams in the UK. I think they're called CATS. I don't know why they're called CATS, but there are, there are genuinely uh, exams in the UK, at least that I took, they are called CATS. And I can remember like thinking back to like, oh, that was the first time my leg ever cramped when I was taking those CATS. And like that story used to be so recently, but now it's like, that was like maybe half my life ago now. <laughs> and it's it's kind of nuts when you start to measure things by like the actual distance to you rather than like how recently they feel. Because I, I guess like as you get older, things that become recent become less recent and things that like used to feel like, oh yeah, that was kind of the distance past. And like, was that even really the same me? And in a way that's kind of scary, but in another way it makes me think like, because I've always been scared that what will happen is you'll just suddenly one day be 80 years old and you'll think like, oh, that's life over then, I guess. <laughs> and it's, you know, one of these like big uh, problems to grapple with. But in a way, I feel like, what if you always just feel old? Like the amount of time behind, like do 80 year olds feel old or do 100 year olds feel old? I've always wanted to ask that. Like I, I never would because like it's it's rude, right? And you don't, you know, 116 year olds are probably not fun people to get along with. Let's be honest with ourselves. Um, but you know, if, if I did speak to a 116 year old and they were like a cool one, they're like, ask me anything. You can ask me like, you know, what I did when I was 16. You can ask me like, you know, like if I've ever tried, you know, like doing these drugs or you, you can ask me anything, Andrew. And I'd be like, okay, anything? You gotta tell me how old do you feel? Like, tell me what a tell me how long ago a hundred years ago feels. Because I'm always curious if they'll be like, oh yeah, I mean, after like 65, you kind of just like, it's all the same really from there. Or if they, you know, really do feel like, oh yeah, I'm a hundred years old now and it's kind of like, I basically have existed forever in my opinion. Because there are people alive right now, I think the oldest person's probably like 113. It's been a while since I looked it up and ages of people change and people die and stuff. But the oldest person's somewhere between 110 and 130 if I'm not mistaken. So you, you gotta think like, if you're over 100 years old, if you're 100, over 117 years old, you lived in three centuries. Um, if you if you if you were born in like 1899, which there are still some people last time I checked again might might have changed. Look at that. But um, let's assume there is someone still born in 1899. They would have been like during World War Two, this really far off world, uh, war. The last time you know we had like full scale war or whatever, they were like 40. They were older than the vast majority of people watching this video. Um, let's say like older than 90% of people watching this video. Um, and they were doing that during this really old time. They, <laughs> and it's, it's, it starts to make you think like, when I'm old, will stuff that's around now seem like this really crazy far back stuff? Like, oh yeah, so, uh, you know, you'll be able to tell your great, great, great grandkids about like, back in my day, we didn't have, actually, if you were born now, like smartphones have always been around, right? Like you haven't answered the time before that. Like back in my day, we used to knock on each other's doors physically to get each other out. Or like back in my day, we used to actually talk to people, you know, like I'm, I'm thinking of like crazy stuff, but like that's that's how it's gonna be, I guess. Cause you know, you, you don't give these people a slack and say, oh, I guess that's always how they are. You think like, whoa, they're, they're older than, <laughs> you know, like modern medicine. How did you even survive that long? There's just all these questions that, you know, you kind of have to ask when it comes to people that are old. And you know, I, I guess it's what, why it's so fascinating to people. Like there's world records and there's people who like faked how old they are. Uh, one, one of my favorite things though is um, one of the oldest um, oldest alive people. I think it might be in the world record holder. If it's not the oldest person ever, she's the oldest woman ever. I think she lived in the mountain in Switzerland somewhere, claimed that the mountains kept her alive. And you know, it's really hard when you hear someone like who has done something say how they've done it or why they've done it because you can't really doubt them because I'm like, okay, if I said the reason I'm so successful on YouTube is because every single day I wake up and I eat six bars of chocolate, uh, Mars, Snickers, uh, m, &M well, M&M's not a bar, uh, Kit Kats, whatever bar of chocolate I have to eat, I'll just eat the whole thing, six of them in a row, just pound them back to back to back to back. And uh, the amount of sugar that gives me just gives me the drive I need to make, you know, four videos a day to, or two videos a day or how many videos a day. That's just how I do it. And you know, if you hear me say that, then on the one hand, like, yeah, I mean, like you've done it. So I can't really disagree. 
But on the other hand, like, well, I mean, that's, you're just being ridiculous, like, and I can tell that. So, <laughs> yeah, I've, I've always been told, like, when someone does something, can you trust their word? Because I, I want to say the oldest person ever is like, oh, yeah, mountain air and uh, persistent pursuit of love or something. Oh, actually, you know, that's that's another uh, that's another crazy thing. you got to think, like, when you turn 110, like, your odds of finding someone your age go drastically down. Like, I'm at, I, I feel like age is, like, a surprisingly important thing sometimes, because... A lot of old people, like, you know, they stick in their ways forever, and then they're kind of done. So, like, imagine being 116, and the oldest person around you is, like, 80, and that's, like, old to every other human being. But to you, they're like, oh, you young whippersnapper, you weren't even alive back during the the roaring 20s. How could you not? They were the best decade. In fact, you know, actually, okay, if, again, more, more, more questions to ask the oldest person. I'd love to ask, like, what was the best decade or something like that? Like, because, you know, they could, obviously everyone has their only favorite years. Like, right now, my favorite year of my life. Um, might be this year, actually. Um, maybe it was 2015. I, I don't know. But, like, one of my favorite years of my life is, like, pretty close by. And, uh, you know, like, in, in 10 years, maybe I'll look back and I'll say, yep, 2017 was probably Toy Cat's best year. That's when he had everything going for him. But let, let's let's assume that is or isn't what happens, right? But either way, you know, let's, let's assume that at some point in the future, um, at some mysterious future point, uh, <laughs> that, um, you know, like, uh, I, that changes and I'm like, yep, that's that. But I think even if I have a favorite year that's in the past, I think I can objectively say like, yeah, I think 20, this, this decade is probably the best one to live in. Actually, you know, maybe the decade before this, I'd say probably, because like things were more stable. Actually, no, that was, that was the big, you know, world wide recession or whatever. But okay, so if, if we say like, stuff like that and we're like okay let's objectively work it out i think i could do a good job i'd love to know which decade was the best according to someone who'd lived in like 12 decades or like 14 decades or even which year was the best year like which which year was everything going right in because <laughs> you know to, to people like them like something like you know 9 11 for instance is like this really really recent event that's like one tenth their life away that's like the same distance to me than like two years is uh that, you know, like, everything that started at the start of this decade, century. Yeah, like, the 21st century must be something they're still getting used to. Like, I have, every single year, I still do this to this day. I'll say, like, something, 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 2016, am I right? And then I realize, like, ah, oh, been in 2017 for seven months, I'm still not getting it. They must be like, so what year, year is it again? It's 1990-something, I think. Nope, it's 2017, my bad. <laughs> and that's, that's gonna be, like, a thing they go for their life. So, yeah, I, I don't know why I spent so much time thinking about old people. Um, what? Really, it was only the one thought, and then I just, while talking about that thought, I started thinking about them. But yeah, I guess we should value them. And, you know, this is something I would love to ask, and, like, I guess I'm, maybe it's shyness, or maybe it's just, like, you know, you don't want to, like, ask and, like, trigger an old person. But I'd love to ask, like, every old person I meet in my life, like, so, what's one piece of advice that you've learned, and that you want to, like, you would, you would tell yourself if you were my age or whatever? Because although you might think, like, you know, their advice is going to not be useful, and maybe it's not, but I have this thing in my life where every every few years I think back to previous me and I say, what an idiot. What, like, you know, 17 year old soy cat looks at 15 year old soy cat and says, what were you doing? 20 year old soy cat looks at 17 year old soy cat and it's like, oh, what the, you know, I can, I can even read my tweets back from the time. I'm like, oh, well, from a different Twitter. But still, uh, you know, I'm like, I'm just like, oh yeah, this is not great. And uh, maybe like, you know, I, I'd love to know what like a 50 year old person thinks about 20 year old them that they change, because then maybe, you know, you don't have to do it, but you can be like, oh, they think that playing video games all day is stupid, and, <laughs> well, you know, I'm, I'm picking a bad example, but, you know, they think that, like, oh, yes, the thing you think you're doing forever won't really be the thing you do forever, and I'll be like, ah, I guess, guess I won't be a, a YouTuber in, you know, because, you know, realistically, like, probably not Minecraft YouTuber in 20 years, but, like, maybe I won't be able to be a YouTuber in 20 years, which is surprising, actually, how many YouTubers believe they'll last for 20 years, because you've got to imagine, like, you know, actually, let me know in the comments down below. Do if you right now, if you had to guess, would you say you'd be watching me in twenty years? Because the answer is statistically no. Statistically, um, every day, something like you know, one third is like there's there's like hundreds of people that are just like that was fun. Oh, it's over now. Every single day. That's that's how every YouTube channel works. Maybe not hundreds. Sometimes thousands. Sometimes one. But there are always people who are just like you know, I'm done with this now. But I, I, I'm curious as to like how many people can see themselves watching it for twenty years. Like even if it doesn't turn true. But, because, you know, I, there are some channels where I'm like, oh yeah, I mean, I guess not. When I was younger, I thought I'd watch certain channels for, you know, that many years. Um, but I guess, you know, it, it depends uh, a lot on what's going on there. So yeah, anyway, that's that's like a weird Fort Wednesday's video on. I mean, only weird for me. Not weird for everyone else. Uh, in case you're curious, the shovel is amazing. But I think torches are still better because 
I cleared out all of this, but it's not like perfectly done. I have to like come around the edges and like, you know, I have to make them a little bit uh, nicer looking. And yeah, I, I don't know. It's not, it's not like the perfect thing. So I guess I need to work that out. And you know, maybe I should just do all of these edges, get them done. Uh, maybe, maybe this is a good one over here. Like just get that sorted and do that. I, I don't even entirely know, but I do need to take a lot of sand back with me to go to drain the other place. So I'll take, I'll, take, I'll, do, I'll do one more inventory of sand and then we'll like fly over there. And that can be like the start of the next episode or something like that. Cause I think it actually kind of makes sense to me because every, every time I've been depositing this stuff, I've been depositing it over there. Maybe I should be flying it back each time. So maybe we'll do that, maybe we'll do that. Who knows, I don't know, I'm just gonna destroy a lot of sand in a lot of places. Uh, but yeah, so back to what I was saying. Um, oh yeah, something I was thinking of doing is like, recording two Let's Play episodes, uploading them back to back, and just see like, how people reacted to that. Maybe it'd be the worst thing in the world, maybe it'd like, ruin the channel forever. Or maybe it would do positive things. Like, let me, uh, in fact, I'll probably do it the week after this one, or like in a couple of weeks or something. But I really want to try that as just like a fun little like experiment, I guess. Um, or maybe I'll do it this week. I, mean, I, I'm, I probably won't, but maybe like in a few days I'll be like, I want to record another Let's Play episode. Because truthfully, these are one of my favorite videos to record in the week. Because like, you know, I'll be thinking about like, oh, it'd be cool if like, you know, this or that during it. Because it's just a, it's a fun opportunity for me to just talk and like, I guess express my mind. Maybe it's like therapy and I'm just saying the things that are on my mind. But no, it's, it's actually fun. Because um, one of the favorite things, like if you're in a group of people, is where people are just like, you know, oh, let's see what you have to say to I get. And it's kind of like a whole 26 minute conversation of that all in one place. So maybe maybe that's cool, maybe it's not. But for now, I've got most of my inventory full. Should I just fill it up? I, I don't want to like go back and admit defeat here, but I might have to in a second. So let's just like get all of this done too. Oh geez, <laughs> like fell into some sand that I, I left there. Um, so we just remove a whole bunch of this, just go right down. And I guess we'll take all of this home now. Uh, or, or we'll do some a little bit off camera. But for now, I hope you all enjoyed this Let's Play episode. Like if you liked it, share if you really liked it, subscribe if you're new around here. I make videos like this one every single day on my channel. And if subscribe, you'll see them daily on your homepage. Please do follow me at IBX Toy Count Twitter because, uh, it, again, the notifications, some of you have been complaining, but like, even the notifications aren't working all the time. And it's like, no, YouTube, you had one job. So follow me at IBX Toy Cat on Twitter. And that way you can always see my videos, even when YouTube says no, um, because that's what you have to do as a YouTuber these days. So thank you very much for watching. At IBX Toy Cat, give it a follow. Um, if maybe you should start an account, follow all your favorite YouTubers, and then follow me first, so I feel special. Anyway, thank you very much for watching this video. I'll see you next time. Bye.